Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 6 of Learn Lightroom 6, also known as Lightroom CC. In this episode, we're going to talk about the tone curve in Lightroom. But before I do that, let me take care of a couple housekeeping items. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you already have, thank you very much for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Now, as I mentioned, this episode is going to be about the tone curve. The next episode will be about split toning. Then the next two episodes after that, I'm going to process a bunch of images. And throughout those videos, I'm going to cover everything I haven't touched upon already. For instance, I haven't done anything with camera calibration. And I haven't used the radial filter. I haven't really cropped anything yet. So I'm going to be doing that in those episodes. I'm going to cover up, uh, cover everything I haven't really covered. And I'm going to reinforce some of the stuff I already did cover. Now today, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the tone curve. And I'm really going to give you an overview today. And in those episodes, when I process the images, you're going to see me really apply the tone curve uh, very effectively to some images and you'll get a better feel of what you can do with the tone curve. Today though you're gonna understand the tone curve just a little better. Now I'm already in the develop module I have all the panels closed except the right hand panel and you can see the tone curves right here. Now in this specific image I already did process it in the basic panel and I added uh, two graduated filters to enhance the sky and that's all I did to it I didn't do anything else in any of the other panels. Now, the tone curve. Actually in Lightroom you get two different tone curves. You get this tone curve that is pictured here. This is called the point curve. And if you click down here in this little box right here, you can see these sliders open up. And you got some more sliders right here. And this is called the region curve. Now, they pretty much will do the same thing to your image the tone curve though is just, or the I'm sorry the point curve though is just a little more powerful than the region curve and the region curve you really can't mess up your image as much it's a little more forgiving and I'm gonna start with the region curve now as you can see along the bottom of this um, tone curve here this is called the tone axis and we have three sliders here so we have the bottom the x-axis divided up into four parts. The four parts are the shadows, the darks, the lights, and the highlights. So we have the highlights at the far right and the shadows at the far left. And the midtones between it are divided up into darks and lights. And you can see there's corresponding sliders right here. And as I hover over a slider, You'll see I'm hovered over shadows right now. You can see that part of the curve kind of gets highlighted also. And similarly, when I hover over the curve itself, that slider down here becomes active. So you can see as I go across the curve, the corresponding slider will get active. And when I go above a slider, the corresponding part of the curve gets highlighted. Now, these three sliders here change the size of the highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. So this slider here, if I move it to the right, I'm decreasing the size or the amount of pixels that are considered highlights and I'm increasing the amount of pixels that are considered lights. So this slider will affect less pixels now when this slider is pushed to the right. And if we double click on the slider itself it will return to its default position. So you could manipulate the image a little more specifically by pushing these sliders around. For instance, right now if I go on the curve, now I should mention the y-axis <clears throat> are the pixels are darker the further down the axis it is and lighter the further up the axis you go. So if I go up here to the highlights area and you can see the highlight slider is now active below and I just pulled down so I'm pulling highlights down you can see the 
you know it's getting a little darker up in here you could see then the slider went down so I'm gonna reset that but if I want to just affect a smaller part of highlights I move this way to the right and then pull down you could see the picture isn't being affected as strong as it did a second ago because I'm affecting less pixels because I limited it by this uh, slider right here. If I reset it, you could see how it changed. Again, way to the right, you can see less pixels are being affected. If I go to the left, more pixels are being affected by me pulling down on, on that um, curve. So we're going to reset it. So that just gives you an idea of the mechanics involved here between the curve itself and the sliders below the curve. Now, most of us really use, let me reset that one. Most of us really use the tone curve to add contrast. Now, you'll know in the basic panel there is a contrast control. As you can see, it's on zero. I didn't touch it. The tone curve for some of us seems to do a better job, a more effective job. And I'm going to cover this a little more in detail where I compare it, uh, the contrast slider and basic panel, to the tone curve when I do all those different images to give you an idea why usually I prefer to use the tone curve. Now, I'm going to do it on this region curve. I usually use the point curve, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But normally, we just want to add some contrast to the image. And what you could do is you go right on the curve itself. And if this is the middle of the curve right there, what you would do is you would go down about halfway between the middle of the curve and the far left of the curve, around halfway, maybe a little further. And you would just grab the curve by clicking on the left mouse button and just pull down slightly. You're making the darks darker. Because remember, as you go down, it gets darker. As you go up, it gets lighter. So we made the darks darker. Now, similarly, this is the middle of the curve. This is the top of the curve. And we're going to go about halfway between those two areas, maybe a little further. We're going to click down, and we're going to push up. So we're making the lights lighter. So in effect, this is called an S-curve. And it adds contrast to the image. You're making the lights lighter and the darks darker. So I'm going to turn it off by hitting that on-off switch. So the tone curve is not active. I'm going to turn it back on. And you can see we increased the contrast in the image. Now, with that said, there is an easier way to do that. We're going to reset this. There are presets right here where it says point curve, even though we're in the region curve. But it says linear. So we're going to open that up and go to medium contrast. And you can see it added a little bit of an S curve to the, sh to the um, curve itself. We're going to go down and make it strong contrast. And you can see how the image changed before and after. Okay, So we're going to put that back to linear. So in using the region curve, it's a little more forgiving. Because if I push up on a point, the curve never gets a sharp like bend in it. It, it really kind of auto smooths itself. So your image tends to not get as goofy looking. All right, for, for that's a technical term in my book. All right, so so that's what you know. A lot of people prefer the region curve because it's a little easier to use, and it, it, you don't get all these really drastic changes in contrast between parts of your image. But once you're really into it more, you're going you might find that you're gonna prefer the point curve. So we click right here, and now we got rid of those sliders, and we don't have any areas of the curve getting highlighted when I hover over it or anything like that. We still have the presets though and they're exactly the same. So we could add medium contrast, we could add strong contrast, but as you did that you could see we have points on the curve now. We didn't have that before. If we go back to the other one, see we have the same waveform here, the same curve, but there's no points. And we go back to the point curve and you can see the points are there now. So what the points are, they could be anchor points or they could be actual points where you're moving the curve. And if we want to do that uh, contrast curve again, that S curve, you could very, very quickly and simply just go right, right here where we went last time and push down and over here and push up a little bit and you're adding contrast. You have this simple S curve. So you could do that very, very quickly. 
Now I'm going to go back to the linear curve and get rid of those points. But what you could really do is a lot of more drastic things to the image. I could affect a smaller slice of the pixels. Uh, so let's say I'm way up here in the highlights and I put a point right there and I put another point there and I take it right maybe even another point there and then I go right here and I pull down. You can see how I'm just affecting the clouds like right in here pretty much maybe a little bit of the grass highlights. So you could really affect a very narrow band of pixels uh, in the image by doing it uh, with this points. And let me show you something real quick. I'm going to put a point in the middle and let's say if I push up here you can see the curve kind of self um, corrects itself or at least I shouldn't say self corrects but it kind of the whole thing slides down over here also. So I'm pushing up over here but it's sliding down over here. Now usually you wouldn't want it to do that. So what you would do is you might add this point here but you would add a point right next to it. Maybe even a third point to help anchor it. So then when you push up over here you're not really affecting below that point at all. You're just affecting you know a certain group of pixels. Um, you know you're applying it. I'm sorry as I talk with my hands because I'm Italian, sometimes I hit my microphone, so I apologize for that. So, so sometimes you're applying it to a, a smaller uh, segment of pixels by doing that. So what you'll see is there's a lot of times where uh, we just want to affect one thing. And you're, you could put these different points on here, and you could affect a very narrow part of the image. Well there's an easier way too to doing that than trying to guess where it is on the curve and that is using a targeted adjustment and if you look right here we have this little donut right here little circle If we click on that you can see our cursor turns into that that is called the targeted adjustment tool and let's say I want this tone of grass right here to be darker so I could hover over that tone of grass and if you look at the curve itself wherever I move my cursor a point is moving around so if I'm on this white pillowy cloud of course it's light so it's way up towards the top right of the tone curve but if I go to somewhere dark it's dark at the more towards the darker end of the curve well I, like I said I want to affect this uh, shade of grass right here so what I could do is hover over that Now I'm gonna push down with the left mouse button and when I do the entire cursor will disappear that's just what Lightroom does so you're not gonna see what I do after that so I'm pushing the left mouse button down now disappeared but I am taking my mouse and I am just pushing it straight up and you can see I'm affecting everything that is that luminance value including that blade of grass that I was over I'm making it brighter now if I pull down I'm making it darker and that's kinda of what I wanted to do so I want to make the grass look a little darker green so I use that targeted adjustment tool and I go over that piece of grass push down with the left mouse button then drag my mouse directly down and I affect the curve in such a way that I made right where I clicked darker. So that's usually how most of us use the tone curve to try to um, affect the, uh, the, the brightness values of a specific part of the image and you know using the targeted adjustment tools how we would do it. So let me turn it off for a second there. We're back to normal. So that, in a nutshell, is how we really use the tone curve. Uh, you could get really technical. You could do some different cross-processing looks with the tone curve, and I actually covered some of that in previous Lightroom 5 videos, and I'll probably cover it in the future too. I probably do it in one of those images that I process when I do a bunch of images, but I think right now, it's beyond the scope of what I'm trying to get across with the tone curve. I don't want to throw too much at you. One other thing I want to just mention though about the tone curve, as you can see it says channel when you're in the point curve, right? We're in the RGB channel. If you want to just, if you want to affect just one 
color, you could go to the drop down and let's say just do greens. And you could move this, you know, curve directly and affect the greens that way. So you're going to really enhance green, add green, you're going to take green away, you know, by pushing up or down like that. And now if we I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but if I don't like this point, I could just grab it and pull it off the curve and then I could get rid of the point. You could do that all the time. So if you have curves here or points on the curve and you don't want them anymore, just pull them off the curve. Just click on them and and yank them right off. All right, so we're in green, the channel green. I could use a targeted adjustment for that too. And I could go down here to the greens and I could click down with the left mouse button. I could push up to like add green and down to kind of subtract green. And if I don't like it, I could just grab this point and yank it right off. And we could do it with, as I mentioned, red, green, or blue. So maybe you want to enhance blues a little bit. We'll go to the blue channel. We'll uh, you know, get the uh, targeted adjustment tool. We'll go up here to the blues, click down on the left mouse button, and pulling down will take away some blue, and pushing up will add blue. Now it adds it to the whole image you know it's not you know just doing the sky but that's what it does so you can get a different look uh, by messing with the different channels and we'll talk about that some more when I really do it on a real image this image here is just happened to be handy to show you it has you know some saturated colors which I think show up better when I mess around with the tone curve so that's really all I want to show you about the tone curve right now again mainly we're gonna use it to add contrast to the image. And the way I would usually do it is I just go to the preset and I look at medium contrast, then I do strong contrast, and I see if I like one better than the other. In this case, I think I like strong contrast a little better. And then I may come in and I may just adjust it just a little bit. You know, move the points around a little bit just to more of my taste. And that's the way I would do it. Um, again, you could do the same thing, or similar thing, if you use the region curve. Uh, you would again, you know, put it to linear, and then you could start with medium contrast, strong contrast. Then you could come in here. You don't have the points to aid you, but you could come in and try to push things around a little bit. Maybe make the highlights less bright by pulling down, and stuff like that. So you could just give it a night, you know you know and try it and if you don't like it when you're in the region curve you could just double click on the sliders that aren't zero and return them to zero automatically alright so that's it for this episode um, as I mentioned we're going to cover that a little bit more in a practical way when I actually do some images from beginning to end so that will be in two episodes in the next episode we are going to do split toning alright so I hope that helps Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, and again, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would truly appreciate it. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.